Sometimes you got to go left. Sometimes you got to go left and then you go right and then we come back. But I'm going to say those three fart jokes again because I need the laugh. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because the chicken next to her farted. And what do you call a dinosaur fart? A blast from the past. And how about this one? What? I didn't get to my favorite skunk joke, or my favorite joke. What happened? <laughs> I'm so befuddled. It's okay. It's all good. God is good. All is well. When you're doing this thing all by yourself, it's kind of crazy. Hi, Dana. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Karmavis. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks for rejoining everybody. (laughs) Jessica, Jen, Sarah, Jenna. Thank you so much for your notes. Um, And here's the best one. Okay. What happened to the blind skunk? He fell in love with a fart. (laughs) Thank you. I had to just like, you know, try to get a laugh out of you to, to recognize and show you the body-mind connection. Because here at House of Love and Light today, that's what we're going to talk about, is the body-mind connection and how important it is to recognize that interdependence and how we can, you know, dig into that a little bit with some meditation, some prayer, some talk, all that stuff. So we got some great, great stuff today. And thank you again for your patience with all the technical difficulties. Sometimes Facebook just kicks you off. So it is all good. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. This is, this is the joy of my week. Oh, reverb is too high. Okay, turn the reverb down. Okay. <laughs> so everybody's giving me some hints. Okay, how's it sound now? Okay. <laughs> that's so sad. Poor little skunk. Oh, that's hilarious. Hi, Susie. Hi, Shanna. Okay, so it sounds a little better, hopefully. Okay. All right, we're going to move on. This is the mission of House of Love and Light, in case this is your first time here. My name is Amy Steinberg, and I created this out of basically the idea that, you know what, if we're trapped in our houses and we want to, you know, try to keep our spirits up, that we can keep to a mission of nourish, uplift, and inspire. So I want to nourish you with some spiritual food. That means some prayer, some meditation. I want to uplift you and make you feel good with really bad jokes. I want to inspire you to be your highest and best you, especially in a time when we really need to stand with all hands on deck. Shout out to the moms. Wow. In Portland, what an amazing thing that's happening where we're banding together to rise above anything that is just insane in our society right now. So let's start by raising our our, um, our vibration with a song. You know this one goes like this. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one i am opening i am opening yeah the vets i am opening i am opening we are taking this time to just open up all right we're opening up i am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one i am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one i am opening i am opening i am opening i am opening 
listen, when you sing, it triggers your parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So when you chant or when you sing, you are feeling better. You are feeling more calm, more centered. So I need you to sing with me. I don't care if you're all alone. I don't care if you're in the middle of a of an outside restaurant and you're sitting there. Get everybody singing with you. Let's sing it out. I am a bunning up. In sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one I am opening I am opening yeah I am opening I am that I am hoping. Troy gives us, I am hoping. Yes, and let's go into some prayer when we're going to do another chant. And this is a Melissa Felipe. And this is, today we are remembering. We are remembering that who we are is a divine you know, a portal through which God expresses. We are not separate from God. We are remembering that we are one. We are one with spirit. That is what we believe here at House of Love and Light is that God is all things and God is expressing as you right now, as me, as this experience of togetherness through the internet. Oh, yay. I'm so glad you're singing, Georgia and Sherry and Lisa. So good to see everyone. Let's breathe and... Let the shoulders drop a little bit. And let's close our eyes if you feel like it and just try to remember. Remember that sweet, innocent child inside, that sweet spirit that you are. I am remembering who I am. presence the awareness of a divine mm, love that is in all things, that permeates this world. I presence God, goddess, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it, that energy of life. And I say yes. I say thank you. I say woohoo. I say yes to the body-mind connection. I give great, great gratitude for this incredible opportunity to be alive at this astounding time. I know it's not maybe the easiest, but it is so interesting and rich, and we are filled with opportunities to grow and expand, and I know that we are expanding. I declare and know that everybody watching this right now is feeling the love, feeling the light, and feeling the goodness, and knowing that this is okay right now, right here we are. Are peace, we are joy, we are all that is. We are healing, we are presencing the awareness of anyone in any kind of health situation that is difficult. We send healing and love. We send healing and love to those experiencing grief right now. And we know that as we presence this, we give it permission to just be. And as we give things the permission to just be, guess what? They shift. So everything is shifting and lifting right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, right here. Let me hear you say amen. And so it is. I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for reminding me who I am. Sing with me. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. Sing with me. Who I am.
Eddie Watkins Jr. is singing us a song today, everyone. We are going to have such a wonderful morning here. So really feel this centering, this healing light coursing through your veins. Feel it. Release. Relax. Enjoy your body. Maybe roll your shoulders just a little. Feel the goodness that is you. I am remembering who you are. I am remembering who you are. And we remember here at House of Love and Light, we remember where all of these concepts of new thought are birthed from. They are birthed from so many different places. And so we honor them. And today we are so blessed with the superstar Lauren Grace lighting the candles here at House of Love and Light. So please enjoy the candle lighting. Really enjoy it and listen to what we honor here from each of the regions of the past. And it, it really only skims the surface, but I like that we take this time to honor all of our ancestors. Namaste. I light a candle for the Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism, for they teach us about harmony, karma, and the way. I light a candle for Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Baha'i, teaching us about tradition, forgiveness, surrender, and order. I light a candle for ancient wisdom, new thought traditions including indigenous teachings, shamanism, paganism, new age spirituality, and science of mind, teaching us to root and expand. And I light a candle for the great mystery, the eternal question, the not knowing. Namaste. so happy to be here with the House of Love and Light of Asheville. Amy, thank you. Um, this morning I want to talk about gratitude, how to be in gratitude and what we can be grateful for. Sometimes it seems challenging to be in gratitude when things feel hard. So this morning I want to tell you what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for these beautiful hummingbirds that did an air show for me this morning while they were all gathering around the feeder. I'm grateful for my animals that wake me up too early every single morning, but I'm grateful that I have that unconditional love to bring me back to center. I'm grateful for Amy. I'm grateful for the absolute lush, green, dewy, wet summer that is the South. I um, am grateful for food. I'm grateful for my partner. I'm grateful for having clothes. I'm grateful for a house. I'm grateful for the awareness and the awakening that is coming through this time in our lives. I'm grateful for intelligence. I am grateful for learning. I am grateful for you being here. You are part of that change. You are part of the awakening of the planet. I am grateful for all those who came before us. I am grateful for the very breath that I'm breathing right now, for the heart that is beating in my chest, for it tells me I'm alive. I am grateful for the courage to get up every single day and try to make a difference in the world. I am grateful for just being. I am grateful for the small little things that bring me back to present moment awareness. And I'm grateful for just being. I'm grateful. Thank you. Make the rest of the day the best of the day. So I have tears in my eyes right now because I love Reverend Renee Laboa so deeply and I thank you Rev for that beautiful gratitude talk. Um, I just want to say that Reverend Renee Laboa and Reverend Christy Snow and Reverend Barbara Lundy um, changed my life. And I wonder for you, who are your great teachers and who are you grateful for? And so as we list our gratitude now in the comments, I want to presence my gratitude for all my teachers. For Reverend Renee Laboa, 
And for Reverend Christy Snow, who I know is, is going through a really hard loss right now. And I know a lot of us are going through losses. And so I just want to presence the gratitude for the love that we have with each other. Um, I might be in rare form today, you guys. Um, I just feel very connected to this experience that we're having um, with each other. So I want to say, first and foremost, that I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you coming and building this with me in, uh, in our computers <laughs> and these screens. I'm so grateful for these screens. I'm so grateful for new people in my life. You know who you are if you're watching. I'm so grateful for the older people in my life. You know who you are if you're watching. I'm so grateful for family, for friends. I'm grateful for spiritual growth. Gratitude for oneness. Grateful for live streams. I'm just going to read some of your gratitudes off. Grateful for family, health, connection, cohesion. Wow. <laughs> grateful for you too, AJ Johnson. Just grateful. Feeling the gratitude. Okay. Keep it together, Amy. All right. One thing I'm really grateful for is the New Thought Movement, which if you don't know what that is, it's Unity Teachings and uh, Science of Mind Teachings. And they have brought me all around the world. I have been blessed to be a part of conventions and conferences. And um, I was a part of a conference called Sister Spirit, where I met Reverend Sunshine Michelle Coleman. And the moment I met her, I was just astounded by her beauty, by her presence, by the way she carried herself and she spoke to us at Sister Spirit and blew my heart wide open. And so I saw her, pe her post a poem, post a poem, and I wanted to share it with you. So here's a beautiful poem that really works with our theme today for waking up to love. This is Reverend uh, Michelle Sunshine, Michelle Coleman. Please enjoy her piece. Well, greetings, beloveds. This is Reverend Sunshine Michelle Coleman, and I am dedicating this recording to my dear Amy Steinberg and her House of Love and Light folks. And this is a piece that Spirit dropped into my ear or whispered into my ear, and I took it down when I was on a walk by the water the other day. And I'm sharing it with you. I'm dedicating it to you today. It's called Wake Up to Love. Wake up to love as if by an alarm clock. Time to get up, sit up, stand up, rise up, rise above. All those things that take you away from what is yours to do today. To see us through to another place in time that aligns with our higher purpose. Wake up to love, even if you think you already are. There's more to see, more love to be, more love to share and care. Allow your vibration to land and touch others to expand so that we all band together in harmony and agree that grace is the place and the space for even more love to be the ultimate case. We have to keep waking up to love. It is imperative that we live and give from our heart and do our part and be smart so that hate patriarchy and white supremacy disintegrate into loving arms that do no harm to any life form, but instead nurture, inspire, and take us all higher. Wake up to love forevermore as never before and help those who are asleep to wake up too. For there is lots for us to do in service to life. No more stress or strife, just love, sweet love. I love you. Blessings to you on your journey in the house of love and light. Take care now. Bye-bye. Grace is the space and the place for more love, even more love. Are you waking up to love throughout this insane time? I know I am. Every day in every way, 
life is getting better and better. That is my mantra. That has been my mantra for years. Every day in every way, life is getting better and better. I share that with you so that you can just pick that up even in times of strife. Because we got to look to the light, y'all. We got to look to the light. Isn't that a beautiful poem? Isn't she just glorious? So I have been so missing Ask Ash because last week I just played some videos because he's been traveling. So here is a moment with Ash. You know, I ask Ash to give us some insight on whatever I'm talking about. So today the theme, if you are coming a little bit late, is body-mind connection. So I asked Ash... Ash Ruiz, what he had to say about the body-mind connection. Here is my baby Ash. Hello there, beloveds. Hello, beloved Amy. Ash Ruiz here. I am on location at the Rocky Mountain National Park. For the past two weeks, I've had a glorious tour of all the untamed beauty of this beautiful country and this beautiful planet. I've been to Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, and now Rocky Mountain National Park. Just so much fun, so powerful, so amazing. And I'm really excited that I get to talk about the mind-body connection. Because why not? Why not the mind and body be connected when everything else is connected too? You know, as Rumi says, so connected that the word connected doesn't make any sense. Lord have mercy. But I think it's such a gift that humanity is recognizing how powerful it is you know, what it is you hold in mind has an effect on everything, including our beloved bodies. Yes, it do. On everything, everything, everything. You know, it's like our story in the moment. The story we tell in the moment informs our biochemistry, how it is we feel. You know, it's like, how do you react? As Byron Quaid, Byron Quaid, I was going to say. Byron Katie asks so beautifully, how do you react when you believe that thought? You know, so powerful, this mind-body connection, this everything connection. And I love, you know, it's so nice to take a moment to recognize your identity with mind, your identity with body, your identity with thought, you know, and for a moment, not have to identify with anything. For a moment, be universal body, be infinite body, be universal mind, be infinite mind. And then from that space, see what arises, see how the moment is loved. Ash Ruiz, what a spectacular teacher and leader alive today. I love you so much, Ash. Thank you so much for sharing. Even from location, y'all, he came to us. Thank you, baby. I love you so much. Okay, so now is we're going to have a dance break. And I'm serious because today we're talking about body mind connection. And the only way sometimes to get out of your head is to get into your body and dance it out. So this is one of my favorite Eddie Watkins Jr. songs. And I encourage you to dance, get up and dance. I'm gonna just chair dance. You'll see me, I'm gonna pop in maybe in chair dance in a little corner with Eddie. So when you see me dancing, you better be dancing. Here is Eddie Watkins Jr. with one of my favorites of his. There's only one life, y'all. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now and your life now in this experience right now. Come on, Eddie, tell it to us.
Is that amazing? Did you dance? I hope you did. I did. Today we're going to talk about returning. Thank you, God. Let's all say that. Thank you, God. Take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. Take my body, take my mind. Make it a holy, call it divine, call it divine, yeah. Oh, precious Lord of all life, help me be present through the pain and the strife. Can I tap in, tune in, turn it up, feel it all, listen to the call to the highest, let us all evolve. We are moving to a greater peace, moving to a deeper truth, connecting, reflecting the glory of you. My God, my good, can I call you into mind? Find joyful, peaceful hope every single time I slow down and check in. Oh, pray it up and uh, count my blessings. Take my body, take my mind, make it a holy call it divine sing it with me take my body take my mind make it a holy call it divine this vessel this gift let it be a lift to humanity's shifting consciousness with gracious bliss honoring existing as holiness we are so blessed to be alive today so we thank great spirit and we live in a holy way we use our thoughts we use our hands we stand for love and we stand everywhere we stand we call the holy land come on take my body take my mind make it a holy call it divine come on take my body take my mind make it a holy call it divine oh call it divine yeah take it take it take my body take 
take it, take my, take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. Yeah. From Marianne Williamson's Return to Love, the Holy Spirit asks us to give him our hands, our feet, our voices, in order that he might use them as instruments for saving the world, okay? We are here to save the world with our hands, with our voices, with our feet. One of the things I really like to do here on Sundays is make a little space for God. Make some space for God to do what God does. What does God do? God does you. God does regeneration, reintegration. God does the sun shining and the earth spinning. God is that energy creating and recreating every moment we exist in. God is the energy of life, and we are portals through which this energy can express, emote, and evolve. Can I hear an amen? It is so important, so important to make space for the divine to hold a place in our mind's eye for this open, wide expression of possibility, opulence, abundance, and joy. Amen and hallelujah. We are given these amazing vessels, these bodies, these brains to receive, to express the presence. And so today, as we talk about returning the body-mind connection, returning to a place of wholeness, we remember that the wholeness, that the wholeness, that the holiness, that the body and mind are holy and simply categories. We're going to look at those categories, those separations, those definitions, those delineations that we use to help navigate this thing called life. First thing I'm going to start off with is the body. And then we're going to move to the mind and we're going to see what we find. First of all, the body. Ooh, the body. It's the most mysterious, magical, profoundly intricate thing we got. You know, we got all these systems, you know, the ones we learned about in science class, you know, skeletal system, nervous system, cardiovascular system, digestive system, all the systems. There's all these systems that we separated our body into and they work together to create this amazing body that we get to experience with. Some bodies are born perfectly healthy and some are born unhealthy. Some are big, some are small, some are black, some are white. But all of them, all of them are totally and completely miraculous and amazing. I give great thanks for this body and even though at times it can be our worst enemy and even though over time it seems to just kind of fall apart and dissipate, it's still holding us right now. So let's just take a moment to become aware of our bodies and how freaking amazing they are. From Cl Clarissa Pinkola Estes who wrote Women Who Run With Wolves, the body is a multilingual being. It speaks through its color and its temperature, the flush of recognition, the glow of love, the ash of pain, the heat of arousal, the coldness of non-conviction. It speaks through the leaping of the heart, the falling of the spirits, the pit at the center, and rising hope. Let's bless the body right now. I just burped, which is perfect. Just as, you know, burp on the truth or something like that. Compliments to the chef. I had a bagel with peanut butter. I don't know. Anyway, let's bless, bless the body right now. I bless our feet that carry us through the day. I bless our legs that move us through the space, running and walking. And those of us who are differently abled, I bless those bodies as well. I bless our hands, our arms, our spine, our organs, our skin. I bless the incredible opportunity to be in a body, no matter how it functions, you know? I think health and the health movement is such a wonderful thing, you know, holistic, looking at health as a wonderful thing with yoga and vitamins and eating well and veganism and all the things. But I also feel that sometimes unhealthy bodies are cursed as being wrong or something you did caused that. And I just want to rebuke that right now. I want to presence the, the awareness that health is a personal choice and what health means to your body might be different from what it means for somebody else. In other words, when somebody has an issue with weight or with a disease or a mental health issue, it is not for me and it is not for you to judge or know, act like you know anything about a person's journey. You know what I mean? So right now, we just drop the judgment. 
We drop it as we praise and we raise our body and we turn it over. We turn it over to that higher power, that God in thanks. And we say, take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. Take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. One more time. Take my body, take my mind. Come on. Make it a holy, call it divine. Yeah. Mm. There's only one body, one mind, one presence. And wow, what about our mind? The mind. The mind is an interesting place. It can conceive so many things we dream we create we imagine we manifest we have ideas we have moods we have emotions we experience our experience is filtered through what we call the mind's eye and the mind you know it's got a mind of its own right ever think a thought and be like mm, that was a weird thought it's our place of processing it's also a place for our hidden longings our hidden desires it's a wonderland that mind of ours and so my thought is that the body and mind work together. They're interdependent. And if we look at it, we can see that really neither one is actually at the helm. They're both at the helm and they can both be helpful to each other, these, you know, these separations. For instance, when we're feeling mental angst, overwhelm, or worry, we can move our bodies to change our mindset. We could dance like we did, go for a walk, do some breath work, which I'll be talking about a little bit during the tools. We could lie down, we could shake it off, we could take a shower, we could do things with our body that ease our mind. And conversely, when we're feeling physical pain, like we're enduring a battle or battling an illness or just plain menstrual, we can use our mental power to ease the body. We can meditate, we can affirm, we can pray, we can focus our mind on a visioning process. You know, actually on that, I have a pretty cool story about a friend. Um, okay, she's my therapist, but she's my friend too, I think. I don't know. You know, you think your therapist is your friend, but they're probably just your therapist. Anyway, she told me this beautiful story. She fell and she had to get a staple in her head. And when she fell, she had to go in a CAT scan and she was terrified. This is just very recently. She was so scared to go inside the CAT scan because she's claustrophobic. She's like extremely claustrophobic. And she was in, you know, physical pain and physical angst and all those things and anxiety. So she got in there and she decided to take herself to a happy place. And she decided to vision very clearly her favorite place to be, which was on the golf course. And she said she remembered the exact trajectory of the golf course. And she got through four holes before she came out and it went by like that. And I just love that story because it's so powerful that we can do that with our mind. Our mind is so powerful. You know, this morning I was talking to Myron and we were talking about mind-body uh, connection. And he told me something that Reverend Angela Geary did. And let's, let's go ahead and do this now. She said, close your eyes and, and picture yourself holding a lemon and picture yourself cutting it in half and then cutting it in fourths and then take a fourth of it and stick it in your mouth and taste that and you'll feel your mouth water just because your mind is connected so directly to your mouth and to your body. It's all the same, right? So our minds are so powerful when we need them, you know? You know? And so when we listen to our mind and we listen to our body, it will tell us what's up. So that's the other side of it. When we're sick to our stomach, you know, there might be something we're not digesting in our lives, something we're having trouble processing. If we're having back pain, we might feel unsafe or have some money issues. Louise Hay, of course, has her incredible uh, book called You Can Heal Your Life. And it talks all about how element, our ailments um, are connected to mental, spiritual, and emotional issues, which, you know, I'm not 100% on all of it, but I do think it's something to it. And I think Martha Graham says it best when she says, the body never lies, the body never lies. So listen to your body. Enjoy your body. You know, it's there for you to take great pleasure in. Remember when we talked about pleasure last week and I really just kind of talked about pain the whole time? <laughs> Well, I want to kind of talk a little bit about pleasure with the body for a minute because I really didn't dive into some of the things I've been reading about pleasure. I've been reading uh, The Politics of Feeling Good Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Marie Brown, and I love this quote, which is really good about connecting 
the mind and the body in a way that she puts it. She says, I believe our imaginations, which, you know, that's kind of our mind, right? Our imaginations, particularly the part of our imaginations that hold what we most desire, what brings us pleasure, what makes us scream, yes, are where we must seed the future, turn toward justice and liberation, and reprogram ourselves to desire sexually and erotically empowered lives. Come on. Come on. Our imaginations. This is how we see the world that we are building, this world that works for everyone. And this is how we become instruments for God's peace. This is how we connect our body and our mind, and this is how we are liberated. I want to presence here once more what Caitlin June said last week in her beautiful um, chant moment. She said, you know, it's really important to honor black and brown bodies that they are treated differently. And it's also right now, it's, it's important for us to honor them as perfect, whole, and complete. And raise this awareness so we can finally have true equality and equity in our country and in our world. Can I hear an amen? Just wanted to presence that. Just a little side note. So I also want to share one more thing about the body and the power of love and connected to the body. This was in A Return to Love, and it's from Deepak Chopra's Quantum Healing. This is like my favorite story I've ever read, okay? So I'm going to read this to you. This is from Deepak Chopra's Quantum Healing. I read it out of Marion Williamson's Return to Love. A study of heart disease was conducted at Ohio University by feeding quite toxic high cholesterol diets to rabbits in order to block their arteries, duplicating the effect that such a diet would have on human arteries. Consistent results began to appear in all the rabbit groups except for one, which strangely displayed 60% fewer symptoms. Nothing in the rabbit's physiology could account for their high tolerance to the diet until it was discovered by accident that the student who was in charge of feeding the rabbits would cuddle and pet them. He would hold each rabbit lovingly for a few minutes before feeding it. Astonishingly, this alone seemed to enable the animals to overcome the toxic diet. Repeat experiments in which one group was treated neutrally while the others were loved came up with similar results. Once again, the mechanism that causes such immunity is quite unknown. It is baffling to think that evolution has built into the rabbit mind an immune response that needs to be triggered by human cuddling. Isn't that so cool? Cuddle it up, y'all. It's really all about love, isn't it? God is love. God is calling us to love, to love ourselves, to love each other, to love the planet, and to love God. And how we do that is with our body and our mind. I'm going to close this little message with a quote from Abraham Hicks, who is really the master of high vibration and the master of a holding a high watch. And she says, well, they say through her, it's not just that your purpose is joy, it's that you are joy. You are our love and joy and freedom and clarity expressing, energy frolicking and eager. That's what and who you are. That's who you are. You're really not your body or your mind. You are pure joy. You are God. You are love. So let's close with one more chant here. Mm. I said, take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. Take my body, take my mind, make it a holy, call it divine. Breathing in here. So I have several more things to offer you, but first, before we move on, I want to thank you for your generous offerings. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, all of the offerings and the tithes that I get. It keeps me able to, you know, live basically, and it helps me to give some money to the artists who donate their time and their energy. 
it, it is it's such an opportunity to, because when we're spiritually fed, it's, it's a great idea to give because it's like a reciprocal energy, you know, keeping the flow going, keep the flow going for you. So yeah, this is an opportunity for me to ask, and it's also an opportunity for you to give generously. So two ways to give. Uh, there's other ways too. I posted my Venmo as well, but you can text love to 828-383-9889 or paypal.me slash house of love and light. There is a lot more to do here. I'm going to give you some tools of the week and then I'm going to have Carol Cook singing for us and a little massage meditation. So do not go anywhere. The tools for this week. I wanted to talk about breath. I wanted to talk about breath work, you know, and not like the kind of breath work where you do the deep breathing, where you're guided. I'm talking about little uh, ideas for breath that we can actually use this week. And I want you to think about this. Um, think about if you're stressed out. So you're really wound up and you're stressed out and you're, you're worried and you've got your, you, your mind is, is all over the place. You can breathe in and then sigh it out. <sighs> can we just do that together? Breathe in, sigh it out. Ah, and let's do that one one more time, breathing in. Ah, and if we're angry, if we're pissed off, we really are wound up about what's going on in the government or what's going on with COVID and being in quarantine, and we're feeling angry, I want you to breathe in quickly and then force it out like this. From the gut, let's do it. Breathe it in. Let me hear you. Yeah. And then when you're feeling anxious, so you're feeling worried, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there right now that's scary. So when you're feeling that anxiety, a quick in and slow out does just what chanting and singing does. It triggers the pineal gland, the parasympathetic nervous system. So let's breathe it in and then slow out on an S. That is the best uh, tool for anxiety. So this week I invite you to pull out the breath and I also invite you to connect with your body. You know, I'd like to actually hear in the comments right now what you do to stay connected to your body in this time of sheltering in place and this time of, you know, getting out very little here. What are you doing? I know for me, I'm doing my morning walk. I'm doing morning meditation. I have a hot tub. You know, I've talked about my hot tub. It was very cheap and it's plastic, but it's the best thing I've ever bought for myself in the whole wide world. And if you have any kind of disposable income and need to find some kind of relief in the world, I recommend it like so highly. Um, or if you don't, a shower, a tub, you know, what are you doing physically to help you through this time mentally? You know, I'm really swimming. That's wonderful. Yeah. There's so many lakes around here. I don't know where everybody's, you know, some people are, I know Georgia yesterday was telling me I had to get in the ocean. I got to get in the ocean. I'll call you back later. I got to go get in the ocean. So swimming is amazing. Taking the puppies for a walk, reading EFT, EFT. Isn't that with the tapping, the tapping? That's so good. Weightlifting, Sarah. I love watching your weightlifting videos, morning walks. Oh, the course in miracles, hugging Sherry, Gail and Sherry are my spirit animals. I swear. Yoga, biking, juggling. I love all these ideas. It's so, 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 so beautiful. So beautiful to hear from everybody. Maybe somebody will get, you'll get some ideas from people here. Um, thank you so much, everybody. So, ooh, I'm so excited to share with you Carol Cook's tune because I thought it was perfect for what we're talking about today, which is the body-mind connection. Carol Cook, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about her. She is a retired teacher. She's math, she was a math teacher for many years. But what's so interesting about her is that, you know, math I think of as being totally left brain, but she's also a brilliant songwriter and painter and artist. So she's like one of the most fully realized human beings I've ever met. And also she's drop dead gorgeous. If you know her, you know this is true. She walks in the room and you're just like, who is that? Bam. Okay, so I love you so much, Carol Cook. And she wrote the song called Walk Like the Buddha. She's been writing songs actually uh, regularly throughout all the political things that are going on. So you should follow her, uh, Carol Cook. You should definitely follow her on, the, uh, on Facebook. Um, anywho. In this song, I just want to break it down a little bit. She says, walk like the Buddha, which to me means walk with mindful awareness, move your body to be present, you know? Um, and then she says, you got to love like Jesus, which means being loving and forgiving with unwavering faith. She says, you got to pray like Muhammad, which means to me to pray without ceasing, living life as a prayer. And she says, you got to talk like Gandhi, Talk with peace in mind, purpose and clarity. 
Finally, she says, you got to smile like the Dalai, meaning the Dalai Lama, which means to be gentle and kind. So I made a little video with her uh, in it. So uh, I just want to make sure one thing with it before I go. Yeah, okay. Um, this is Walk Like a Buddha, Carol Cook. I love y'all. And I'll be back again with a little uh, massage meditation. So don't go anywhere. I love you. Bye-bye. Here's Carol. did you love that that sweet face oh my god i love you so much carol cook thank you so 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 much for making that video for us and that song it'll get stuck in your head i mean i've been singing it all week all week so big shout out to my leo people watching all you leos out there you know i used to make a joke at my shows all right i'm doing an astrological check leos and scorpios raise your hand and then i would say don't date these people <laughs> date each other but I'm just, I was just kidding. So Leos, I love you. Happy birthday. And for the August theme, we're going to go with Untamed. I've been reading it this quarantine. It is so good by Glennon Doyle. So we'll talk about go wild, becoming 
wanting the true self and humility. I cannot even uh, wait. Do you see Troy gave you a standing O, Carol? Hey, I want to also say that I looked back on some of the comments and there were all these things that I had never heard of. Brain Gym, Alexander Technique. I'm going to totally bug Jenna Jaffe about all that this week. Maybe she'll help us out with that next week. Um, but so there's there's tools in here. So you can always re-watch this throughout the week. I know sometimes I'll check in and redo one of the meditations or something like that. You can always fast forward. You could share a watch party. Please, um, you know, keep this going. We're growing this. It's, it's a really beautiful way um, uh, to connect throughout this crazy weird time. I am so grateful for you. So I just want to take a moment to give us a couple more little tools to connect our body and our mind. So I want to start with a little meditation. So imagine, take your, take your middle finger if you want to. Take a deep breath with me. We're just going to do a little presencing here. Take your middle finger right here and press down. Just, just lean your head gently and then rub over your eyebrows. And let's do that again. Breathing in, pressing. This is a headache pressure point. Breathing in, you can just relax you. Shout out to Myron for all this beautiful music that you hear. And a third time, just leaning down, third finger, opening up. Just relaxing. Now take three fingers, put them on the back of your jaw, and just gently press forward. Breathing. Yes, Ellen, this will all be here whenever you go back to watch again. All these comments are still there in the comment section, so you can always go back. And a third time on the jaw, just one more time. I want you to do something that you've probably never done, which is give yourself a head massage. You know how they do it when you go when you go to get your hair washed. Shout out to my stylists who are watching. Talk about therapy, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just rub it. It's so this is a hold your brain, man. Your head holds your brain, dude. Oh, I should just really go for it and make my hair a complete mess, shouldn't I? Oh, feel it. Oh, oh, such a great week with you here. Thank you, everyone. I hope that you're able to really tune into your body. Be grateful for your body this week. Have that body-mind connection alive and vibrant. And remember that you are perfect, whole, and complete exactly as you are. What a blessing to be here with you this Sunday. I'm going to say what Reverend Renee Leboa said, which was make the best, the rest of the day, the best of the day. I've really enjoyed our Sunday together. I hate it. I hate when it's over, honestly. I usually wind up processing it with one of you out there who's watching. I'll, I'll call Myron or Georgia and I'll be like, what do you think? Was it great? And we'll just go over it because it's so much fun. Yes. Oh, I want to also give, um, ask you to go to the YouTube channel, the House of Love and Light YouTube channel and subscribe because until I get a hundred subscribers over there, I think I can't go over there to stream as well, but I'd like to stream both at the same time. I really, really, really appreciate all your love offerings. I'm having a hard time saying goodbye today. I don't know what's going on. Have a great, great, great week. And one more time, I will remind you that on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, I lead a music and meditation right here. And we have a, a lovely group that meets and we always do a mental health check-in. So any of you who are sheltering pl in place alone or who feel lonely at all, please come join us seven o'clock on Wednesday. I love you so deeply. I'll see you soon. Love